Hello and welcome to Cardboard Decoy Plays. This war of mine is a very cheery intro for this sort of an intro screen, I realize. But uh, so this game has been making the rounds recently and I have heard bits and pieces about it. And uh, I finally watched uh, Northern Lion play an episode and I was like, ooh, this looks interesting. I don't do this often. There's usually, whenever I buy a game, it's a very much so impulse purchase and, uh, you know, that, that kind of a deal tends to happen, especially Steam sales, all that fun. Um, but yeah, so with this one, it was a process of like, you know, it could be interesting. I don't want to really want to be buying a lot of video games right now or anything like that. And then I kind of thought about it and I thought about where this game could go. And I read some of the Steam reviews and the ones that caught my eye were, uh, humanity is terrible, 10 out of 10, thumbs up, you know, that kind of a deal. I was like, huh, maybe this has interesting potential. So I decided to go ahead and start playing it. So here we are. That's basically what's happening. So the premise behind this game is it is a survival simulation holdout simulator kind of deal. Man, that wasn't convoluted and, uh, as a title at all. But uh, basically, no zombies. You are stuck in a wartime situation where you must find supplies and survive. And hopefully everything turns out okay in the end. But uh, from what I can understand, it doesn't. So it should be kind of interesting. And what I have seen played of it, I don't understand it much. I'm doing a blind play here. This is I have not played it at all. I have no idea what's going on. Except for some very rudimentary third party sort of information that I have uh, gleaned from it. So, uh, yeah, I'm basically playing this effectively blind, or maybe with an eye patch or something. No depth perception. That works, right? As a metaphor? Maybe? I don't know. Either way, um, yeah, so I'll probably be really terrible at this, and this will be really embarrassing, and I don't know how long the series is going to go on, but I'm going to play it until I feel satisfied with myself. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that should be really interesting. Either way, let's go ahead and get started and see what's up. Day one. Welcome to hell. Something something. Fuck the war. That seems to be a common sentiment. Again, I can't overstate how much I appreciate that there are no zombies involved in this game. It's uh, all wartime stuff. Very, very gruesome and realistic-ish. Very interesting to me. So here we go. This is our play field, clearly. Unfortunately, my volume is too low to hear the music, but I'm pretty sure it's awesome. Okay, here we go. How long has the siege lasted? It's hard to say. Every day is a struggle for survival. The city is crawling with snipers, shelling his ordinary business almost every night. Phones don't work. There's a shortage of food meds, and many people are left homeless. Bruno and Marco have always been good friends, so when the war broke out, they decided to stick together. They met Pavel while searching for supplies, scavenging for supplies. He used to be... Pagoran star football player. He's now just another homeless victim of war, so they teamed up hoping for the best. Well, okay, there we go. With proper tools, we could build the stuff we need. First of all, let me change this really quick. We're not going to go too terribly high. Apply, resume. And uh, so, yeah, here we go. We've got Marco, who's a skilled scavenger. I'm trying not to waste my time. What I do know is that we have until like 8 o'clock or so. Pavel, fl slight, a fast runner, slightly wounded. And Bruno, good cook, slightly sick. So our goal here is to manage all of this. And uh, we do that by kind of clicking around and on different things. And then, uh, aha, here we go. So we searched that one pile of stuff. And I'm kind of intuiting through this. Again, I haven't played this at all. So, so far, as you can tell, the interface is really, really good and uh, intuitive. Uh, so let's see. We have herbs, various herbs that can be used to make herbal medications and roll up cigarettes. Could be useful. And then we have components. Various components need to make just about anything. Nails, duct tape, plastic containers, scrap, things like that. So uh, we've got sort of the unicorn horn of material pile there. An essential component for all kinds of stuff. Plus we can help chop it f uh, to fuel stoves and heaters. Okay, cool. So we can grab all of that too. Um, so yeah, that's basically the first part of this game here is finding all this stuff. Here we go. More stuff. That's herbs. Lockpick. Single use, but it opens locks quickly and quietly. Components. Just, there we go, that drags. Clean water, some relatively clean water. You'll need to prepare a good meal or alcohol. Could be handy, and more wood. All right, let's do that. All right, we want you to go in there, I think. And you can, well, you don't have a shovel. Don't do that. All right, we're lucky it's not cold in here. They'll say things that'll kind of give you hints as to what you should do, so... 
That'll probably be incredibly handy. Oh wait, no, cancel, cancel. Uh, I keep, I'm clicking on these dirt piles and I know I can't really clear them away without a tool. Or maybe I can and tools just make it go a little bit faster. What are you? You're slightly sick. What can we do in here? Can we do anything? Uh, maybe not. Okay, you go search over here. And you're slightly wounded, and we don't have any supplies, so it's not like we can do much of anything. Okay, here we go. Parts, various mechanical parts used for building and fixing complex devices. So there is a very strong crafting element to this game. Uh, electric parts, some electric parts, that will come in handy. Okay, so we'll take that. And we're basically just scavenging right now. Aha, raw food, herbs, components and stuff for crafting. Good deal. You, go over here. You unblock that door, I think, is what you should do. Alright, herbs, gears, electronics, cool. Uh, yeah, he's working on that door. Can you clear this out? Well, let me, the rubble's blocking the way. It'll take a while to pick through it. Uh, is he gonna... Yeah, he's gonna start doing it. Okay, well, it'll probably be faster to do it a different way. So there we go. We've got a small food supply started. And then there's this. There's, this is where we do the crafting. So, okay, someone should search for supplies at night. I'll probably need that information. All right, so here's stuff that I can make. I can make a bed, which will be good for sleeping, um, I imagine. Chair, it's better to sit on a chair than on the floor. We build it to make this place more like home. We'll make us feel better through tough times, which I imagine are going to be plentiful. Simple heater allows us to heat the shelter so we don't get ill. We can prepare fuel for using wood books or various components. It would be great to listen to current news and weather forecasts. We could be prepared to deal with hardships if we knew about them well in advance. There's nothing on the news. We can listen to music uh, to brighten our mood. So, crude stove, simple as they get. Well, you know. I won't read all of this. Moonshine still. We can make uh, booze. So we can uh, probably... Yeah, I know. Bartering is apparently a part. I don't know how to barter or what it looks like. So that ought to be interesting. Metal Workshop allows us to make tools such as shovels for clearing rubble, crowbars for breaking doors, and knives for self-defense. Uh, later we can use it to build more advanced tools or even repair firearms. That's good to know. Rainwater Collector. Um, needed for cooking and making alcohol. Might be wise to build a couple of them. Okay, homemade single-use filter to purify rainwater or distill alcohol also might be handy. And then we have fuel. Uh, this is... Okay, yeah, it's all one fuel, but we make it with different things. So there's books, wood, and components. So we just need to be able to manage our resources appropriately. Let's go ahead and... He's climbing over there. What is this? Improved workshop. Okay, this is where we upgrade, and it needs a lot of resources. And enable enables the manufacture of more sophisticated items and appliances. All right, let's stick with, um, huh, what do we need? What do we need right off the bat? Well, metal workshop for tools. Okay, and we need to put it, we'll put it right there. Okay, place. So he's going to make that. Uh, you... Do we have anything else to clear out immediately? I'm thinking. I'm thinking and looking right now. Let's see. Did you... Did that not get looted? I thought we looted that. Maybe I didn't loot all of it. That's a possibility. Yeah, this is definitely taking a while. It'll be a lot faster with a shovel. Yeah, here we go. We'll, uh, take all of it. Yeah, we know what all that stuff is. Okay, so, we're waiting for that to get finished. And then up here... Wait, do we have a chair anywhere? Yeah, we've got a chair right here. He is slightly wounded, so he will get to use the chair. That is fine. All right, and now what can we make here? Oh, wait, no, no, no. You you go sit. You're wounded, and we're going to need you for stuff. So let's try not to get you any more wounded. All right, um, homemade tool you can use to pry open a few doors before it breaks or does the job slowly and loudly. Okay. And a single use, but it opens locks quickly and quietly. A small shovel for picking through rubble. And uh, a, it used to be a kitchen utensil, but now it's a dangerous melee weapon. Good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and make this shovel. And that's going to speed up our rubble clearing a bit. And uh, that will make this whole... Yeah, it hurts, but I'll manage. Let's see, slightly wounded. We don't have any medical supplies, which is a little unfortunate. So, uh, yeah, our time is going right now. It's plus 22 uh, centigrade, which is, uh, you know, maybe not the warmest, but pretty warm. Um, you know, warm enough to support life without frying it. There you go. That's, that's, that's how we'll, 
That's how we'll shovel, or shovel that. That's how we'll frame that to keep warm in here. Okay, he's picking that lock. That's good. Look at how much faster that is than digging through it with bare hands. Okay, I think I have a fever. That's not good. We probably need to keep him off of his feet. Okay. There we go. And yes, okay, he's using the shovel. That's good. All right, what have we got in here? Ah, here we go. We've got bandages and books. Good for good book is uplifting. The more we have, the better. If times are ha hard, we can make them into fuel for heater or stove. Yes, okay, cool. And then this is used to dress wounds. Okay, perfect. So now what we can do is have him patch himself up. And yes, let's go ahead and do that. Yep, patchy patchy, good stuff. And you go raid this cabinet. And you continue shoveling anything we happen to need. Aha, here we go. We got more clean water. And this is a piece of jewelry, so we can use that to barter. Or whatever fools still put value and material wealth in these hard, hard times. So, of course, you know, if everything recovers, then we're the suckers for getting rid of that when we could change it for good lucre. Um, all right, he's going upstairs. Slightly wounded, bandaged. Okay, we're, we're actually going to have you go up here. You're going to sit. No, you know what? We're going to have you craft a bed or something. We're going to need at least one bed. One bed will be good. One that's locked. Okay, that's really unfortunate. All right, let's go ahead and make a bed. We have to place it. Let's place it. Do we want to place it down in the basement? I don't know if there's like a contextual issue with placing things. But I'm going to go ahead and put it down here because I guess if we get raided, it would take a really long time for them to get to the sleeping people. So that would be the best idea. Okay. And then we want you... It's just a flesh wound, but it hurts. Okay, well, you go back and sit down. That's cool. We got two injured people. I mean, it all starts out randomly uh, whenever you first start out. So it's different characters. Uh, they've got different afflictions. Uh, and so I don't really know how to handle all of them the best way. I just know you do stuff that you would normally do. It's like he's bandaged now, so I'm sure he'll be fine eventually. Um, yeah. And then this guy is sick. We just need to make sure he rests. And if we find any medicine, we'll uh, debate whether or not to give it to him at that point in time. So... Okay, he's almost done digging through here. Oh, it's nighttime. That happened rather quickly. Okay, so this guy needs to sleep. Uh, this guy is a fast runner, but we want him to guard just in case something happens. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh... There we go. It's the first night. I don't expect anything to happen. If something does happen, then we're totally screwed. Um, again, I'm kind of familiar with what happens here, but I don't know the implications of all of my decisions. And now we want Marco, the skilled scavenger, to go scavenge, and he's got 15 space in his backpack, so that's a lot. Um, we've got, let's see, semi-detached house. Half of it is a ruin, but there are people living in the other house. They don't seem friendly. At night, you can sometimes hear shots fired from there. We could probably scour the abandoned part of the supplies if we need to manage to sneak back if we manage to sneak past the inhabited part. So it's got huge amounts of food, lots of meds, huge amounts of weapons, huge amounts of parts, and danger. Uh, decrepit squat, it's been inhabited by the homeless since long before the war. There's always been struggling with lack of food and might ha not have survived the recent shortages. There shouldn't be a threat and we could find some useful things there. Huge amount of materials, lots of weapons, lots of parts. So if we need to start making like weapons and stuff, we can go there. But uh, And then we have shelled co cottage, college, bleh. I need to get some water or something for this. I, it's been a while since I've actually sat down and recorded a video, so I took a break from Kerbal Space Program, and uh, now it's like, oh yeah, talking a lot. That's uh, unusual. All right. This neighborhood recently got shelled, and many houses are still burning. People are fleeing for their lives in a hurry, so we may find some useful stuff there without meeting anyone. So we got some few food, huge amount of materials, lots of meds, lots of weapons, lots of parts. So what we kind of want is meds and materials. Um... Well, no, we need food, too, so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll see what we come across and try not to go nuts with everything. So what do we need him to take? We don't have anything that would be useful, except for maybe a lockpick. Yeah. No, that's a shovel. Take the shovel, just in case. I don't have any lockpicks left. That's fine. Uh, oh, prepare and take and scavenge. Cool, and now this is a very different game all of a sudden. We are scavenging, which means we go about and do scavengy things. So we gotta sneak about 
and uh, grab all the grab all the goods. So there we have materials and wood. We'll go ahead and take this. How big is a stack? A stack is two. All right, let's go ahead and yeah, we'll do like that. Exit, and then uh, we can go over here. And there's context menus for everything. So now we can look inside, and now it's clear what's going on. Ooh, interesting. Okay, I don't know how to make him not run though. It's kind of unfortunate. All right, we've got a lot of wood here. We'll go ahead and even out our stack there. Let's go ahead and go inside. Doesn't appear that there's anybody inside, so we should be fine. But we'll go over here to this fridge. And there's a mousy. Uh, okay, and then we'll take a stack of food, stack of water, stack of sugar, and uh, exit. We're still kind of looking for, like, tools and uh, weapons. If there are any of those, then we definitely want to grab those. Let's take this other half stack here. Alright, and then what's over here? And yes, so we're just sort of browsing. There was that mouse up there just making foot noises. So, okay, we got medicine and bandages. And exit. We definitely want those. So if we move over here, we will see that nobody is standing there. That little red flashy thing is indeed a sound indicator, but it is indicating to us that that was the rat that we saw. So... Uh, time is flowing. I don't know whenever this ends per se, but I do know it will end at some point and probably not when we want it to if we're not careful. So we need to do this at least fairly quickly and effectively. So let's see. What do we have here? We have... Uh, these are homegrown tobacco. Wait, we don't want that just yet. Raw food. Be more nutritious when cooked. We do want that. Uh, parts. Let's get some parts. And materials, okay. I'm kind of like splitting my interests here um, a little bit, but at the same time, it's like, well, you know, this is what you do if you have no idea what you're doing. Or so is my excuse. Let's go ahead and let's see what's in this pile. What have we got? Okay. And this is a lot of wood. That's good, but not immediately necessary. He's going to dig away all of this stuff. So our shovel... I can't scavenge during combat. Okay, we're in scavenge mode and weapon mode. Interesting. All right. Okay. And what do we got over here? All right, I need something to open this lock. So that is indeed locked. We're going to go back up here, see what's upstairs, and then basically come up with an idea. At least now we know what's in this house, and now it's a matter of uh, deciding what we want to pick and choose and how many lock picks we might need in order to get all of that. So... Things are on fire, but apparently not that on fire. That door is locked. Oh, there's a mousey. So, let's see. What have we got here? More materials. Okay, so we're definitely going to need wood. And so let's take that and another box of components. Okay, and then I think we are good. Let's go ahead and look through this peephole here and see what there is to see. Okay. A whole lot of nothing. That's pretty okay with me. We can kind of get a nice little 3D view if we move around in there. Not that that's immediately necessary, but uh, I do kind of like how the perspective works in this game. It gives everything a lot of depth. Oh my god, so much depth. Alright, let's go ahead and run to exit. That'll work. Cool. And we are done. Marco is back. So... Now we've only got a couple minutes left, so we'll tidy everything up for our morning, and then I'll end the video, and we'll go on to the next day tomorrow, or the rest of this day. So that's almost exactly 20 minutes. No, that's a lot less. I did a lot of intro. Never mind. Uh, look what I got. Very jovial and yet tired. Okay, it seems that Pavel is starting to feel a bit unwell. Oh, that's no good. Hungry and tired. Hungry, slightly sick, recovering. Uh, slept poorly, hungry, slightly sick. Nah, uh, this is not good. All right, you, you need to go up here, and what can we make you do? I'd gladly eat something. I bet you would. Let's go ahead and get you in here. We're going to let him sleep because he was out scavenging and getting us all of our goodies that we're going to need here. And you go ahead and, you know what, you craft a bed too. We'll have more than one bed. That's the smartest idea at this point. All right. And let's go ahead and do that. Place. Okay. And then uh, what do we need? What do we need? Ah, yeah. Crude stove. That's a tool, right? Uh, we don't have... Oh, that's not good. That's really, really not good. 
I think we just... Did we use it all on the bed just now? That's not great. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and... Uh, you are hungry and slightly sick. We need one more component. Otherwise, we're going to get super hungry and that's not going to be a good deal. I haven't slept in some time. Ah, well, now you're sleeping. So, And then we'll have another bed. The guy who uh, slept poorly can kind of muddle about and we'll finish clearing out everything here. But then after that, we'll we'll worry about what we need to worry about. All right, we got more food, more herbs, more these things, more water, more electronics. Okay, cool. That's not what we need, though, so keep looking. All right. Yeah, it's locked. Dang it. Okay, maybe maybe get him to come make some tools. No, you know what? You stay up here, and then you come over here and make some sort of tools somewhere. Yeah, it should be right here. Sorry, I'm kind of looking around and making sure there's not any piles I'm missing. So I'm not particularly focused. Do you hurry? Thank you. So double click makes them run. Good to know. Let's, uh, that's going to end up using more components though. This is where it becomes kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of situation. Let's go ahead and make it just in case there's enough. I feel ill. I hope it's nothing serious. This is probably going to end very poorly for me. <laughs> I can already tell. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, and then uh, whenever I come back, we will probably see what failure looks like. But, uh, assuming that doesn't happen immediately, then uh, we will at least see how to survive a bad situation. Uh, that's a possibility. I'd be okay with that. So, yeah, until then, let's go ahead and... I think that's locked, but, you know, we'll, we'll try to make the best of it, as per the usual. Where are my cigarettes? Ah, uh, shit, he smokes. So, yeah, smoking is a, a thing you have to attend to, or they go crazy, and I don't know what happens when they go crazy, and hopefully we don't find out anytime soon. Either way, this has been Cardboard Decoy playing This War of Mine. If you have enjoyed, please do like, comment, and subscribe, and then I will see you next time. Have fun.